Welcome to another Photoshop editing tutorial. In this video, we are going to turn this shot into this one. So we are going to breath some life into this image by adding some more warm color tones, overall restoring some more details and just play around with the contrast a little bit. Most of that will be done in the Camera Raw editor, while I will be using Photoshop to apply some dodging and burning and enhance the colors some more. If you want to follow along, you can find the raw file in the description of the video and now let's begin. First off, as always, I'd like to change the profile from Adobe Color. This time I'm going with Adobe Landscape. As you can see, this will have a big impact on the dark areas, brightening them up a little bit, but it will also add some base saturation, so that's pretty nice for this shot. Now, before heading into the basic stuff, you can see those vertical lines in the very near foreground are kind of distorted due to the wide angle lens I used. I do want to fix it and I can do that pretty easily in the geometry tab. Yeah, since we want to fix the vertical lines, I'm going to push the vertical slider until I get something that looks good. So let's push it quite a bit to get some straight lines here. All right. Now, of course, due to this adjustment, you can see a pretty big gap in the sky, but don't worry about that. I don't want to crop it out. Instead, I want to fill it with the content we have later in Photoshop. So just ignore that for now. Let's head into the basic tab. As I said in the intro, I do want to apply some warmer color tones in here and I'm always starting this by just introducing some more temperature with the white balance. So let's raise that quite a bit here. Just like that, you can see we, we are actually getting some more neutral color tones. We might as well add a bit of tint, but not too much. That's a good spot right there. So next up, let's work on the exposure. Looking at this hologram, it looks quite good. We have a lot of areas in the darkest parts. I do want to change that a bit by just raising the exposure. And this way we get back details in the darkest parts. Of course, the sky is a little blown out. So let's just fix that by bringing down the highlights. And so we can get back some nice blue colors in the sky. Furthermore, I'd like to bring down the whites just like that and we get this nice soft look going on, which I really like here. Uh, I do want to add a little bit of contrast. Then let's also add some texture, giving this shot more sharpness, some clarity and maybe let's drop the dehaze to make the soft look a little more visible. Finally, I do want to introduce some more saturation by bringing up the vibrance and the saturation itself. All right, perfect. Let's compare to before real quick. You can see the colors look much nicer and the vertical lines are fixed as well. So next up, I do want to enhance this by applying some masking. So let's head into the masking menu. I guess I start by working on the sky. Therefore, I'm using a linear gradient and just drop it down like that. And I want to make the upper part darker. So let's just bring down the exposure. All right, looks good to me. Then I do want to add some fake sunlight coming in from the left side. Here, let's just use a radial gradient. I'm going to create a rather small one. I don't want to overdo it. I just want to have some subtle glow in here. Just overlapping the woods in the back. Let's try it like that. For the glow, I'm going to push the blacks. And I do actually also want to push the temperature, giving this area some more warmth. Okay, and finally, let's add some negative dehaze to make the glow effect a little stronger. So that's a bit too much. I want to tone it down a notch. That's looking good. So far, the sky looks good to me. Next, I do want to work on the foreground a little bit. Here, I'm using another linear gradient just to target the wooden planks in the foreground like that. In here, I do want to bring down the exposure and thus we are going to lead the eye more towards the center of the image. Just like that. Also, we can bring down the whites to further bring down the exposure without risking underexposure. Okay, looks good to me. 
then I do want to add a little point of interest right there in the center in the foreground. For that I'm going to add a radial gradient, just a thin one like this. And in here let's bring up the texture and I also want to bring up the clarity quite a bit. Now this radial gradient might be a little too high so I'm going to place it further towards the foreground. All right, that's it for the masking part. Again, let's take a look at the before in the image. As you can see, the sky is much more interesting now with much more details as well as the foreground. So next up, let's work on the colors. For this image, I'd like to add into the color mixer first. In the saturation tab, I'm bringing down the yellow tones and I'm also bringing down the green tones. The greens will be dropped all the way down since I don't really like the green tones in the back in this case. I do want to keep those warm orange tones of the highlights however. So that's already it for the color mixer. Then let's head into the split toning part. Here I'm just working on the highlights, giving them a very warm color tone somewhere in that range. And let's push the saturation all the way up. Just like that. Here I do want to further bring down the luminance, which will make the highlights a little darker. And I also want to work with the blending, introducing some more of those warmer color tones to the highlights. And I'm going to drop the balance just a little bit. Okay. Now the split toning with the highlights alone might look a bit weird. But I don't like to change the midtones and the shadows. Instead, I'm going to change the split toning globally, which I usually not do, but in this case, I found out it works pretty good. So, for the global adjustments, I'm going to use a cold color tone. And let's bring up the saturation a notch. All right, that looks perfect. So, we're having a lot more warm color tones, but we are not losing any of those blues. That's looking really, really good. Next up, let's head into the calibration tab. Here I'm just going to drop the blue primary hue, making this whole warmth effect a little stronger. And then let's push the saturation. All right, perfect. Finally, let's sharpen the shot in the details tab. Therefore, I'm dropping the radius, increase the detail, add some masking, and finally add some sharpening. And here we are, done with the raw adjustments. Now it's time to finish the shot in Photoshop. And of course, first we are going to fix the gap at the top part of the image. Now if I'm using the lasso tool, just create a rough selection here. Hit Shift F5 with the content we are selected and just hit OK. That worked pretty well, except for that part on the left. So I'm going to select it again, just this time a smaller selection and try the content aware for one more time. Looking much better. Then let's clean up the image of sensor spots using the spot healing brush. Just zooming in and brushing over all the things I want to remove. Maybe clean up the water a bit. For the next step, I'd like to enhance the glow on the left some more. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode of that layer to soft light grab the brush tool and I'm going to use a very, very saturated foreground color for that. Somewhere in the orange range. I think that looks good. And I'm going to bring down the brush opacity to not make this effect too strong, of course. All right. And then I'm just going to paint in a little amount of glow. Just like that. That looks really, really good. We could add some more glow to the reflection on the water if you want, but I'm quite happy with that. Next up, I do want to introduce some more warmth to the sky and the sky alone. For that reason, we first need to create a sky selection. I'm going to select our image right here, then go to select sky. Then I'm creating a new layer and press the layer mask icon. Let's drag the layer to the top. With this layer, we will only affect the sky in the background. So let's change the blending mode to hard light for this layer. Again, grab the brush tool and let's maybe desaturate the foreground color a bit this time. Now I'm just painting over the bright spot in the back. 
and thus just making it a little brighter but also introducing some warmth to it. Okay, I quite like it this way. So at this point I do want to make the highlights a little more vibrant. Usually I would use the TK panel for that which allows me to create luminosity masks. At this point I want to notice since a lot of people ask how to get this plugin. This is a paid plugin but there's also a free version available with all the things you need to create luminosity masks. However, if you don't want to install this plugin, I currently know of one other way to create a selection for the highlights and that's the shortcut of Ctrl, Alt and the 2 key. You can see I get a selection for all the brightest parts of the image. And with that selection active, I'm going to the adjustment layer menu and create a vibrance adjustment layer. So this layer will only affect the selected highlights from before. And as I said, I want to make them more saturated, so I'm going to bring up the vibrance. Next up, I'm going to apply some dodging and burning. And to do that, I will be using the TK panel plugin. So let's create a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay for the dodging and burning stuff. And with the TK panel plugin, I want to target those tones in the foreground, which is probably somewhere in the mid-tones range. That means I'm going to try the mid-tones to layer mask, which is looking pretty decent. So let's add this as a layer mask to the overlay layer. And then with a white brush, I'm going to brush over the foreground to dodge things. So I'm just making them a little brighter. Just careful to not overdo it, but I think this looks pretty good. At the same time, I do want to burn the midtones in the distance. So let's just use a new layer, switch the blending mode to overlay, apply midtones too, as a layer mask, of course, switch the foreground color of the brush to black. And maybe let's drop the brush opacity this time. Now I'm just going to brush over the background. Okay, and you can see this way we are just adding a little contrast to this whole scene. I could maybe erase that area around the center though, just to keep it bright and interesting. But now let's work on the color some more. I'm going to merge all those layers, which is very destructive of course, but since I know what editing lies ahead of me, I can do that safely. If you want to be safe, go ahead and merge a smart object. Now with this layer, I'm going to head to the filter, Nick Collection, Color Effects Pro 4. And first off, I'd like to apply the polarization effect, just making the colors a little stronger. Depending on the rotation, the sky starts to look really weird, so I'm going to push it all the way up, while also pushing the strength quite a bit. Also, I do want to add another filter, this time the Brilliance Warmth effect, to just add a little more warmth to this whole image. That looks pretty good. Maybe some saturation. All right, let's apply it like that. Okay, at this point we could play around with the brightness of the image. Here I'm just using another adjustment layer. So let's use levels. And I'm going to bring down the highlights a notch, making the highlights brighter. But I try to not overdo it. I think this looks better. I might want to try and warm up this shot even more. So for that reason, let's use a photo filter adjustment layer. And you can see this already has a subtle warmth tone to it. We could play around with the density, making this whole effect a lot stronger. So I think that looks really, really good. Not sure about the top part with the lost blue tones, but let's just give it a try like that. So I think at this point I'm pretty much done editing this shot. I hope this tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.